So hello all, I hope you hear me. Um, we will welcome you to our webinar about KPA tooling with requirements traceability data. The presenter today will be Boris Holzer. Um, at the first, I will give you a short overview about our company. Um, ITEMIS was founded in 2003. It's privately held and we have offices in Germany, France, Switzerland and Tunisia. ITEMIS has more than 200 employees and a revenue of 22 million euros. Therefore, 30% in the automotive area. Now Boris will give you the details about the KPI and traceability. If you have any questions during the webinar, please write them in the Q&A field. So, yeah, thank you uh, for this welcome and uh, welcome from my side. So, short before Christmas webinar for, for a hard topic. So, excellent that you joined in. And I really welcome you uh, for this uh, today's uh, webinar. Um, so, the agenda for today is I will tell something about traceability in general and especially about our tool, Yakindo Traceability. And I will tell uh, uh, our report, reflect some experience that we made um, when, when we yield some, some data out of, this, out of this treasure of traceability data. So how can we feed KPI metrics and what is a suitable tool chain to, to do just that? So that is, that is the agenda for today. So, uh, Merit, could you please mute yourself? I have some echoes. So uh, let's look uh, at traceability. So why traceability and what is traceability? Um, on this slide, you see the definition of traceability from the automotive spice uh, uh, process standard. And we like this definition a lot because it nearly matches um, really our, our feeling and our, our view on this topic. So um, first of all, there's a definition. Um, it says traceability refers to uh, links between work products uh, across the whole B. So it's not called or not labeled requirements traceability, but traceability. So in our understanding, we can trace from user requirements or stakeholder requirements uh, to, to uh, system requirements, but also in the opposite direction. So really from low level tests to high level requirements. So that's why we like this definition, because it does not mention requirements traceability, but traceability. And the second thing we like a lot about it is that it does point out why somebody should do this. So if you have your work products linked, then you can do coverage analysis, impact analysis, and reveal some requirement status, uh, and I will demo just that today. Um, but one thing is missing in this definition, so uh, it really literally, literally says traceability refers to the existence of links, and a lot of tools provide linkage between uh, artifacts, maybe from test case to requirement, but in our under understanding, traceability, a trace is a chain of links. So traceability is the ability to really trace across several hubs. Uh, and of course, for these um, yeah, work, work products in, in different domains, requirements, tests, um, modeling, uh, source code, there are several tools that you may use. Requirements management tools, modeling tools, IDEs, and testing tools. And this is a challenge. So you have to somehow gather all data in one tool. And this is exactly what Yakindo Traceability can provide. So Yakindo Traceability is a tool integration platform. We support quite a lot of tools. Um, and this slide gives only uh, lists, uh, gives only the, the most important ones. Uh, the, 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 if you want the complete list, please send me an email and I send it to you. And if your tool is not on that list, then please take a look in this lower right corner at the text and the XML adapter. So we can extract information out of XML files and we can, this re we can do this really smart. So if you have a tool which provides an XML export, we can trace to, that, to the data of that tool. So, um, and the projects that, that, that 
traceability is used, our customers nearly the complete right side of the V. So all testing tools provide XML export. So maybe TESI, mTest, uh, Vectorcast. Okay, Vectorcast has a text format, not XML, um, but we can trace to all of them. So this is not a problem. And if if you have your proprietary tool, which maybe uh, defines not an XML export yet, we can create a new adapter or new integration easily. Um, so, but another point, so not only the heterogeneous tool chain is, is a challenge, the other challenge is really the huge amount of work products. I've seen uh, door charger project, uh, door control unit projects, uh, with with 20,000 requirements and I've seen charger projects with, with hundreds of thousands of requirements and the appropriate number of test cases, modeling elements and so on. Uh, so this is really a challenge. Who wants to maintain all these links? And our approach is um, just reuse what is already there. So the, the requirements, they are linked within the requirements to may, may be doors or polarium, whatever most of the test tools they provide an import mechanism for requirements and you link the requirements within the test tool and then the test tool uh, generates a report and says this requirement has been tested successfully and the test for that requirement failed and we can read these reports um, we can really use conventions uh, to regard them as traceability relevant so Imagine you have your source code uh, in a folder called um, Wiper and you have a component in your design uh, called Wiper. So we can define with our tools rules that says all source code in the folder named uh, Wiper should be linked to the component named Wiper. So this is really traceability relevant. The, the position of the source code file is traceability relevant. So um, the, the developer, really, the, the, who, who creates the C code, he has to do nothing with traceability. He just has to put the file into the right folder. Um, <laughs> the bad thing about uh, this approach for us is he doesn't need our tool, so he, he does not acquire a license. So, but it works out of the box. Um, unit test tools, they may create coverage reports, code coverage reports while they run. So we can then act, analyze these coverage reports to, to figure out which unit test belongs to which portion of, of source code. But you may have noticed these little gaps, and there are gaps in the V. There is, for, from the existing tool chain, there is no mean to, to link, let's say, in this case, in this example, from requirement to design. And this is where your Kindle traceability can kick in. So we can close gaps and then analyze the linkage of the whole V. So, and as we have seen, we want to reuse existing links or calculate links or derive links from, from existing informations. We have several approaches for that. And I will, I will just short explain how we can do that. So first approach or, or mechanism is link recognition. Uh, if you have links in your tool, you can configure your Kindle traceability to recognize these links. If you have, let's say, in your SysML model in Enterprise Architect, linked something with SysML mechanics, let's say uh, dependency or relation or generalization, you can configure your Kindle traceability to recognize such UML uh, 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 relations as traceability relevant. If you have linked your requirements in Polarion, on DOS, on Jira, on DOS NG, you can configure your Kindle traceability uh, to, to recognize these links and consider them as traceability relevant. The same is true for Jira or issue tracker tickets or for Rhapsody models. Um, uh, I just want to point out uh, Polarion or highlight Polarion because um, we can read the linkage across the whole V uh, faster than Polarion itself because um, we, we really have access to the Polarion database. So, we, we don't use the Apple layer of Polarion, we just extract the data from the Polarion database and um, we are faster than Polarion. The same is true for, for DOS NG. So DOS NG provides an OSLC adapter, which is, let's say, slow, but they also have a reportable REST RP. 
so which is intended really to create reports so we connected to this reportable rest api and it was also slow it was not fast enough um, uh, it does not meet our performance requirements so we we um, contacted the ibm uh, support and they explained to us how, how to directly read the data from the database so um, we, we really have huge amounts of data and we want to read them fast and we for these tools listed on this slide we cannot only read the artifacts so requirements or model elements but also the links between them second approach is the attribute based link derivation so look at this example there is an interface specification um, it has been generated from an R, uh, ar xml file and it's a Excel report of a, of a AutoSAR interface specification. Column A holds the interface name. Column B holds the, the port. And on the other hand, we have some test case. In this case, it's test case 401. And this test case is specified in XML. And it has an uh, attribute called requirements. And this attribute holds a string with a semicolon in the middle. And you can configure traceability to read this string, split it at the semicolon, remove the leading uh, prefix, and if the first part of the uh, remaining string matches to column E, uh, B, A, and the second part matches to column B, then consider this as traceability link. So uh, this, this is the approach that worked for, for most XML um, uh, adapters that, that I mentioned on the slide before. So, if your tool provides an XML export and the XML export contains references to some other artifacts in the V, we can then follow these references and consider them as traceability relevant. Okay, third mechanism is query based link derivation. Um, consider this part, lower part of the V, so software requirements linked to architecture, to detail design, to software units. And we have the unit test specification on the right side. And imagine you are on a project and your unit tests are linked to software requirements and to software unit. And then you have an automotive spice assessment and the assessor says, oh, unit tests have to be linked to software detail design. And, but then you can create a query similar to a database join in your Kindle traceability. So if a particular software requirement, if software requirement 23.8 is linked to a unit test, and the same software requirement is linked uh, indirectly, not directly via software architecture to an element of your detail design, then this unit test belongs to the detail design. And your Kindle traceability can derive such links. And it can really uh, create traceability relevant links so uh, that, that, that visualizes the traceability graph or it can create a simple report which, which um, shows which, which detail design belongs to which unit test. So your choice. Um, then we have this thing with this complicated name, non-invasive link storage. So in this example, we link from enterprise architect, uh, from, from uh, architecture to detail design, and architecture is an enterprise architect, and detail design is a MATLAB Zimo link. And non-invasive means we can create the link without touching the enterprise architect model and without touching uh, the, the MATLAB model. So we, we store the link in YT itself. So this complicated name, non-invasive means we do not touch this, we do not touch that, we, we store the link information in your Kindle traceability. And this is the thing that I meant at the slide, we can close gaps. So if you, if you have no means to create links between tools, uh, your Kindle traceability can create these links. And by the way, this is our bulk link creation editor. So it has some nice features. Um, you can hide the artifacts that are already linked. So then it feels like a task list. You see what is not yet linked yet, and you can create the links. I will demo that by a simple drag and drop. Um, it has filtering mechanisms, uh, everything that you need to, to find the artifacts that are relevant for your particular uh, case, even if, if there are hundreds or thousands of artifacts. Um, 
And last but not least, we, we, we have invasive link storages for some tools, and we are developing uh, further invasive link storages. Invasive means the links, the, the links are stored inside the tool. So we have an example here. There is some C code, and the C code has some comments. And the comments have some cryptic IDs. And in this example, this cryptic ID is the ID of a model element. So the link from this file to the um, detailed design is stored inside the C code. So that's why it's called invasive. And we can uh, store links invasively, not only in C code, but also in Excel. Uh, imagine you have uh, an Excel sheet specifying tests and column A holds a test case ID and let's say column E holds the requirement IDs, then Yakino Traceability can not only read this Excel, it can really uh, maintain this Excel. If you create a link in the tool, then it will update the Excel sheet. Uh, the same is true for Enterprise Architect and even for uh, MATLAB Simonic. So we can store link information in MATLAB Simulink models. Um, I don't know whether you are uh, MATLAB Simulink uh, experts. So for the experts is we can only do this in SLX files, not in the old MDL files. So um, yeah, this webinar has limited time, so I cannot um, show you all the features that we provide in Yakuno Traceability. So I will skip a lot of them and maybe I have the chance to highlight some uh, in the tool demo itself. So, and what I prepared for you for the tool demo is um, data that is arranged in this uh, V, which is heavily inspired by automotive spice. So we have stakeholder requirements extracted from doors, system architecture, and this interface specification we've seen on a slide already in Excel, software requirements again and from doors, architecture and enterprise architect, uh, detailed design MATLAB Simulink, uh, we have source code and the right side of the V is covered by Excel, Word and XML in this example. So now let's switch to the tool. Um, so this is the welcome page of uh, Yakindu traceability and I uh, like to, to start the demo with a welcome page here yeah, because it's a welcome of course, but um, it shows something, it shows some, some of our philosophy. So uh, you see this, what is your task today? We understood that traceability in a project is relevant for different roles. So the engineer who creates traces, he may want to go in the tracing perspective and he, maybe he does not want to see the whole bee. The analyst or requirements responsible, he wants to see really aggregated data. So we have this uh, analysis perspective and maybe the process re responsible he wants to configure what should be linked where how should data be extracted so we have several views uh, on the on the traceability data and they are suited for for different roles and um, if if they're not suited well we can in, you can adjust this you can add more rules uh, you can customize the tool really that it uh, helps you in your daily work. So this is the first thing I want to show on the welcome page. And the second thing is, is these headlines. So we really have help if you are new to the tool. You can, you can uh, start our demo uh, 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 video. Here are links to the introduction chapters in the help. We have the release notes. Um, and if you are completely lost, we have this um, FAQ and support uh, button and uh, you can really send your questions directly to us if you want to. So now let's switch to the tracing perspective. So this is what the tool looks like uh, if you start it. So we have the artifacts that have been read uh, from, from the various tools as shown on the slide. So stakeholder requirements from doors, uh, system requirements from doors and so on. In this lower left corner, there's one of our editors which supports the link creation. Um, here is this bulk link creation editor, which, which you all have seen already on the slide. Here are some issues. So in this case, some warnings, something, uh, uh, something has changed. So there are uh, 
suspicious links and we have a traceability graph. So let's start exploring our traceability data. So I um, unfold this stakeholder requirement subtree and if you click on the artifacts uh, or the rep representation of those artifacts, then the uh, belonging graph is drawn uh, in the overview on the right side. And um, yeah, these graphs, they may get really, really huge. So in this case, you see the stakeholder requirement is linked to the system requirements. And this system requirement is linked to a test and to some uh, architecture specifications, which is linked to a software requirement and a test. Um, but we have some filters already applied. So the depth of the graph is limited to three. If I, if I uh, lower the filter, so, so you see um, that the tree gets really uh, larger and there's still a filter. So in this case, the traceability links are evaluated uh, in one direction. So from the stakeholder requirements down, but not up again. So if, if I remove the second filter, so that, that then triggers the bidirectional link evaluation, you see the graph gets even larger. And um, so, but even such graph where, where you can rec not recognize a single requirement may help you, you see, um, I know because I configured it that the low level test should be red. So uh, at the bottom of the graph, everything should be red. So I, I can see by even if I cannot read anything, I see that the coverage in this area of the graph is not good because there is no red on the button. Um, so, uh, so uh, and we learned this from a customer who used this, uh, who used this color scheme. So it was not our idea, customer's idea. And that's why I like it a lot. And but now I, I reset the filter so that we can uh, read something. So you can explore the graph. You can explore it in the tree or or uh, or here visually. But Yakino traceability also supports the navigation. So I have here a representation of a stakeholder requirement. And if I double click this representation, doors opens up. So uh, it really op opened the module and selected the requirements in the module. And this works in the opposite direction. So if I uh, select requirements in doors, then this selection is reflected back to your Kindle traceability and uh, the belonging uh, graphs are, are um, shown here. So imagine you have configured your, your Kindle traceability to look like that. So only the overview is visible now and I even can make it smaller and I'm working indoors. So now I'm requirements engineering. I select something and I want to navigate. Oh, I want to see, I'm, I'm not the requirements engineer and I want to see is this requirement already linked? So I can do this live uh, and I can navigate from let's say uh, the, the stakeholder requirement to the system requirement to the test case. And if I double click the test case, um, then Excel opens up. Uh, so this Excel, uh, this is now the Autosar Excel interface specification. It's a little, uh, it's, it's a large Excel file, so it takes a moment to open. Uh, but you see um, the, the belonging interface uh, uh, port is selected in Excel, and also for for Excel, the selection is reflected back to your uh, traceability. So uh, selection propagation works for external tools. And now let me just. Uh, reset the layout. But uh, the selection propagation also works for internal tools. So Yakino traceability is built on Eclipse and Eclipse is a, uh, let's say common C development um, IDE. And we, we have read some, some source code uh, which is traceability re relevant. If I, if I double click this uh, C file, um, you see the links. Uh, as shown on the slides, but in this case, they don't contain these cryptic um, enterprise architect ID, they contain uh, MATLAB paths. So, and if your tooling is built in Eclipse, we can even enrich it. So this comment, which is only, let's say, traceability information, uh, we can use this as hyperlinks. So if I now click this comment, it, it navigates uh, to the MATLAB visualization. So it opens up and this is our MATLAB inter, uh, visualization in Eclipse and you see the block that had been linked uh, to the C code and yeah this viewer is, is uh, 
another one of our products. It's called um, Yakindo Model Viewer. It's integrated in Yakindo Traceability. And yeah, this model viewer is also Eclipse based. So we can uh, add some uh, support to this viewer as well. So these propellers, they are not from MATLAB, they are from Yakindo Traceability. And if you click the propeller icon, you see um, to what this block is linked. And you can still navigate. So uh, I can now navigate, let's say, from MATLAB back to, uh, to the C file. So uh, selection propagation works for external and internal tools. And if you have internal, uh, which means based on Eclipse tooling, we can make it uh, a little bit more uh, comfortable for you. And by the way, there is this view, selection history. So everything that had been selected may be in Yakindu or in Excel or in DOS is triggered on this list uh, or added to the list. Um, so you can then reuse the artifacts that you selected to link them easily. So uh, let's say I want to create a link. Uh, uh, so create another link. So I, I, I touch this C file and I populate our link editor and I want to, to, to add this C file at end B. And uh, I want to link it to this block because I just looked at the diagram and I clicked it. So I know this is the relevant block. I populate the editor and uh, if I create, the link will be created, but I get a warning. The link already exists because I navigated. So uh, I won't create the link now. Um, so just uh, reset the editor. So, and this is, this is the YT editor, which is intended to create links while you are working. So we, we track selections, uh, you can uh, drag and drop. So this, 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 uh, this guy is really intended to create links during your work, but there are also, as we have learned from, from our customers, other situations. Imagine you are in a, in a uh, later project stage and you have created your requirements and your test cases, but your link coverage is not well because you did not maintain the links. Um, for this case, uh, we created uh, the bulk link creation editor. So this really should support link creation, let's say, in a late project stage when you, when you have created your requirements and your tests, but they are not yet linked. So um, if I, I now just chose a link type. In this case, I want to link from software architecture to software detail design. And I can see um, these guys, they are already linked. I can recognize this by the chain symbol. And this one is not covered. So this, this element of software architecture is not linked to detail design. And I can, uh, it works in the opposite direction. So I see this ele these elements of detail design are not yet linked to, um, to the architecture. And I can create the links uh, simply by, by drag and drop. So now um, the coverage on the left side looks pretty good. Uh, right hand side, not so well. But uh, yeah, these are just example data. And by the way, um, uh, in this, this showcase has really only few uh, uh, data, not these tens of thousands, but um, we, we use it in production. So, but, but I don't want to uh, bother you with, with uh, let's say, two low terms in this uh, webinar. So this is the traceability perspective. So to sum it up, you can uh, yeah, explore the traceability. You can navigate from and to the artifacts. You can create links and, and visual, uh, look at your traceability graph. So now I switch to the analysis perspective because we have, we have a huge graphs and this huge graph is a treasure of data and now we want yet to really yield something from from this uh, data so we have this perspective uh, analysis perspective it provides a dashboard so you can see how many artifacts are there so i have i don't know whether you can read it um, here it says we have 15 unit tests in this example and if i select this uh, piece of pie then you see the list here and you can export it to excel and process it there because um, in, in real projects, there are really uh, thousands of test cases and um, you don't want to maintain these tests in, in uh, Eclipse editors. So our customer said we wanted an Excel, so we made the way really short to Excel. So 
And this dashboard has some static queries. So list me all artifacts or all, all artifacts which are not yet linked or list me all links, but you cannot customize this query in this dashboard. So we have a query language included. Um, so here you can really create your custom queries. Um, and I just show you some examples. So um, if you look at this query, it says, give me all traces from stakeholder requirements to software qualification tests, which means if you have the automotive spicing in mind, it starts in the upper left corner, goes down on the left side, and then on, on the area of software, it goes right to the tests. And um, please list all of them and aggregate the number of test cases and uh, group it by start. So the query is how, how many software qualification tests are there per stakeholder requirement? And if I run this query, you see, oh, the, cover, uh, the coverage is not that good. There is only, only one stakeholder requirement which is covered with software qualification test results in this case, not test cases, test results. So only this requirement has been tested by uh, software qualification tests. And uh, I don't even know if the tests are passed. So um, if, I, if I uncomment this where clause, so um, it says where the result of the test it does not equal pass. So where test fails and run the query again, you see, um, oh, only all the stakeholder requirements covered by two tests and one of them fails. So um, yeah, that, that is this query. Another query which is really powerful is this trace matrix. And I explain it not by the query of definition, but by the result. So I run the query and I enlarge the table. So this is the requirements traceability matrix that has just been calculated. So this stakeholder requirement is not linked at all. This stakeholder requirement is linked to system requirements. And um, yeah, this stakeholder requirement uh, is linked completely down to the source code. So this is the requirements traceability matrix query. And we have a lot of queries. Um, so you have support, code completion, suggestions in the editor. You, you see what is possible, what is not. Uh, we have joins, we have intersections. So uh, we can really create or feed complicated metrics uh, with simple queries. And if this is not sufficient, so this, what is, let's say, hidden inside your kind of traceability is that these queries are programmed in Java. Uh, so the graph traversal algorithm is programmed in Java, which let's calculate all traces from stakeholder requirements to software unit. And you can add your own coverages if you want to. So you can add runtime, enrich this query language to, to make it really suitable for you. And when we look, yeah, there's another query file. And this query file, uh, we, will, we will use these queries. Uh, I, I will not explain them, just, just let's say look at, we will use these queries when we calculate the KPIs. And this is what I want to do now. So I switch back to the slides. At least I try to. Okay. Uh, and let me just find the right slide, sorry. So I think it's this one, just try it. Okay, so finished with the tool demo. So now what about KPIs in a traceability scenario? So, um, I, I again show this definition of, of uh, from the automotive spice uh, process assessment model. And there is this term requirements implementation status tracking. So the requirement implementation status is an important key performance indicator. And we implement this key performance indicator in projects. Uh, and in this is example, I define it as follows. So, a stakeholder requirement is considered new if it is not linked at all. A stakeholder requirement in this example is considered analyzed if it's linked to a system requirement, but not further. So if a stakeholder requirement is only linked to a system requirement, we consider it as analyzed. And 
if a stakeholder requirement is linked to, to somewhere in the V, but not to software units, we consider it as work in progress. And if it's linked to finally uh, or completely linked, if there is a really uh, complete chain from the stakeholder requirement to software units, we consider this requirement as implemented. Um, so this is just, let's say, an uh, um, easy to explain metric for this um, webinar. Uh, in the field, we have way more complicated metrics. Uh, I did not mention or consider the right side of the V, so we, we implement metrics like a requirement is considered implemented if all tests are passed and if all tests of all derived requirements are passed. And then we run this matrix and our matrix says this requirement is not covered, this not, this is not implemented. And then the, the engineers explain to us, ah, this is because this requirement should be uh, verified by a review. So there is no test result because we review it. We just have this flag in, in the requirement specification. And so if this flag is checked, then consider this requirement as tested. Yeah, and we adjust our metric. And then they say, ah, this requirement is only an aggregate. So it's not a requirement in itself. It's just an aggregation of other requirements. So this requirement is considered tested. It does not require, if all derived requirements are tested, it does not require an own test case. So we started with a simple metric. And now we have uh, projects where our definition, whether a requirement is implemented, covers uh, three or four pages uh, of specification. So simple metric for this example. And I also, yeah, but there is a challenge and the challenge is graph queries. So we create a traffic traceability graph and graph queries are complicated. Um, I don't know whether you are familiar with SQL. If you have your data in a database and a graph representation in the database, then every link is a join and it, it, uh, well, it's not fun for the database administrator to create queries uh, for graphs on SQL databases. So they are dedicated graph databases, but they are complicated and they are not so uh, mature as SQL databases. So uh, how can we uh, yeah, really, really, um, what, what is the answer to this challenge of graph, that graph queries are complicated? And our approach is, let, let the business experts define KPIs and let the data experts create the queries. And we have this YT query language, which helps you to close the gap. So the idea is that your Kindle traceability extracts his data into uh, a relational database. And those metrics, which should be calculated on the graph, they are created by Yakino traceability and just written to the database. And those queries, which could be calculated easy in the database, they should be calculated in the database. So um, we really um, can create the queries with, with the technical um, uh, support that is, requirement, uh, that is required with, with regards to the problem complexity. And the final solution should be a database where you can create your queries and define and read and adjust your queries easily. So uh, the architecture for our solution is as follows. We have, um, yeah, we have our, our data. In this case, we only look at the left side of the V and we read this data with your Kino traceability. And in your Kino traceability, we define some, some coverage queries. And what uh, your Kino then does, it extract the generic representation of the raw data into a database, and it enriches this data with the specific evaluations based on YT queries. So this database is simple. So uh, the, the scheme is simple. There, there are no, maybe there are not even link tables within it, just, just a result table. It, of course, it depends on your business, but uh, we, we created solutions like that. And if the database is simple, then you can create a simple dashboard tooling with a user-friendly query engine. And I will uh, give you a demo of that, that now. So how it could look like. Um, so switching back. And now I'm starting the browser. And this is, in the end, the dashboard that has been created by uh, 
traceability uh, as specified on the slide. So this is the view on the data in the database. So we ran several data extractions uh, in October, uh, weekly extractions, and you see, uh, let's say in October 8, uh, we only had a few requirements, so stakeholder requirements by status, and uh, you see these status as specified, so uh, stakeholder requirements that are new, stakeholder requirements that are analyzed, stakeholder requirements that are implemented, and stakeholder requirements that are, that are somewhere in between. Um, and you see how data changes over time. And if you want to look at the historic data, let's say, uh, why was this requirement not linked or which requirements were not linked at October 22nd, you can um, simply zoom in. So navigate to to, to, to list and uh, uh, again, navigate to list. Uh, I, have, I have two windows here, sorry. Uh, so you see the list of stakeholder requirement and you see on October 22nd, the status was implemented. And now imagine you are the business guy and you don't know SQL and you say, oh, I, I just want to, let's say, uh, remove the filter. And now I want to see all data that, that was there at October 22nd. So that's, that's easy. So if you want to add new filter, you can filter by name and position and status and version. And, uh, these, these, yeah, in the end, these are database columns. So design of the database should fit the need of the one who wants to create the KPIs. But the one who wants to create the KPIs, he, he doesn't have to deal with SQL joins or complicated graph queries and all that stuff. So this is, this is a message that I want to give you in this scenario. And here, here is some other metrics. So this, this dashboard is, similar to the one in Yakino traceability. You see all artifacts by type. So we have 15 unit tests, uh, 11 software architecture elements, and uh, yeah, you can navigate, look at them. Uh, so drill down, um, this works. And so this, this is just a demo of a limited example holding 248 worker tips. And just if you, if you have a question or think, oh, it works for 248, uh, 80, uh, but will it work for thousands? So here's, an, here's an, another database or another traceability scenario. Um, so this is um, if you want to trace to thousands of artifacts, it's fast really, because the data structures under the hood are simple. And you see th these are um, uh, yeah old data and I just want to run a new data extraction. So now I switch to the uh, um, desktop and I have a simple batch file which usually usually runs on your continuous integration server or continuous build server. So if I run this script, what happens? It starts a Yakindu and this Yakindu connects to the DOS database and extracts the data and maybe it checks out the files from your version control system, your test cases, your Excel files and it builds the traceability model and it analyzes the data and it extracts then the data into the database. So uh, give it some time to run, read some data from DOS, uh, data are already there. Now it calculates the coverage metrics. And uh, once it's done, uh, it will close. Um, and of course, on your continuous server, you will not see any UI interaction. It's just on this demo showcase. So now it populates a database, creates tables, staging tables, and copies the staging tables into the historical database. And if we switch back uh, to the browser and uh, refresh our da data uh, dashboard. So these, these are the data now of today, just have been created. And usually this uh, runs nicely. So uh, this is our approach. I mean, and you see um, these methods. So we now have four requirements that are new and five that are implemented. And if I go back uh, to your Kindle traceability, I can run this very same query here. So this is the query. I run it in Yakino traceability, which is just reflected into the database. So I see the four requirements that are new and the uh, uh, five that are implemented. Um, so uh, question is why, if I can see it in Yakino traceability, why do I need a central database? And the answer is um, to this story, 
the truth is on the build server. So I've seen scenarios, uh, or I, I get a call from a customer and says, Yo, your Kindle traceability says on the Jenkins, it says the requirements, they are not tested, but the tester linked them. And on the tester's machine, uh, it's, all metrics are green. So where's the problem? And it took us some time to figure out that the tester simply forgot to, to commit his changes. So he did not check in his test case file. So things like that, they were, if, you have, if it's centralized and you have a de defined tool chain and a clear configuration, so what is a stakeholder requirement? How, how are stakeholder requirements extracted from those? This convinces assessors. And um, if your assessor wants a special uh, overview or special metric, um, we've seen scenarios where, where, where the engineers, even within a SPICE assessment, created YT queries, which, which uh, um, answered the questions of the assessor, what he wanted to see. So this works, um, yeah. So we really, uh, um, we really can standardize things. So when you now I have some time left, so I can give you a short view on the Yakindo configuration. So um, I just uh, tell you how, how we read data out of Excel because Excel is a well-known tool. So the software integration test specification, um, we look at the Excel files on this sheet and we look at the column with the header ID. We search the column with the header ID. So this column with the header ID holds a test case ID. And if, if there is a special content in these cells, we simply read the test cases. So it's software integration test specification. Um, you see this, and, and this is the specification of how it should be represented in your kilo traceability. So software integration test specification, this SWITS is this WITS, and then comes the sheet name, so auto wiping evaluator component. Then uh, comes the value of the cell holding the ID, so 101.2, and then the value of the cell right next to it, and this is probably the name. I don't know whether it is, but I simply can double click it. So I see it's the name here. So, so here's the heading ID in row four. This T101.2 is um, uh, this T100. So this, this is how we extract data. And we can do this uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah, safe and reproducible. And this convinces your assessors. Um, yeah, but. Um, Again, the, 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 yeah, the main message is, if we go back to the slides, um, so this, this thing, um, so we don't do traceability because automotive spice requires it, so, or the, the, your OAM requires it, uh, we really can provide some added value. So we really can uh, create reports based on traceability data for you. So we can really work with this data so that it supports you in your daily work. This, this is a message, message of this uh, webinar. Yeah, so I'm through with the presentation. Um, and as I am the presenter, I don't have the, uh, it's not possible for me to read your questions. So, Merit, could you please uh, check whether there are questions already there? Yes. Yes, we have the first one. What about scanning repos, SVN, Git, in order to trace against particular commit? Okay, yeah. Um, so, uh, this is a very good question. Uh, yeah, we are Eclipse based and we have several version control clients uh, included. So. Um, so I, I can switch to, um, let's say, in this case, the Git perspective or the subversion perspective. Um, it's not configured here, but you can, um, you can, uh, so the, the, this version control client is included, but what we not support is specify we trace to this file uh, in this version, we do it the other way around. The YT configuration is a file and you can check in this file into your project together with your uh, source code or requirements or whatever. 
so you you can branch it and and this is how it works so if you want the traceability on that branch then the configuration is on that branch so you only have one version control system and this is the, this is the version control system and traceability is under the control of the version control system and not the other way around so uh, but there is another challenge uh, we have server based systems like doors or polarion or ptc integrity there we have um, uh, concepts like baselines so you you if you really want to create a, a, a tag over all your artifacts you have to mix so let's say version control tags or, or branches with with um, baselines in doors for example so and and we can we can close this gap so the yt configuration is checked in the version control system uh, and it says i want to trace to let's say this baseline so we can close these gaps but um, there is a clear statement we don't want to mix traceability and versions um yeah that's it um by the way um th this uh, this um question goes a little bit in the direction of change detection so we have several means of change detection um i switch back to the analysis perspective and um, uh, uh sorry to the tracing perspective and um i run um suspicious validation and see what happens. So there are two suspicious links. Uh, let me just figure out what is suspicious. So here are two warnings, two suspicious links. And if I double click this, I see the link from software requirement 4212 to this um, test. Something is suspicious uh, and it's link and A. So the requirement has changed, but what has changed? I have to look in the details um so ah someone has made a period in the indoors so someone changed the requirements indoors and we can uh read that and and yeah demo that and and, and recognize that and um, i don't know whether this change is relevant or not if you have to adjust the test case or if you just uh, take it so if i want to just accept the change uh, i can i can uh, do this in your kind of traceability and say, even if the requirement changed, the link is still valid. So, um, yeah. Another question? Yes. Um, one additionally, do traceability links have specific names? For example, certifies, implements, verifies? Yes, they, they can have. They can have, if you want to. Let's say, um, if there is only one link type from stakeholder requirement to system requirement, it probably is, let's say, uh, refines or implements, but uh, you can define types in the configuration. Um, so I can add a, a classification, let's say uh, verifies. And I can say this, this link, um, uh, this link verifies uh, something wrong here. Okay, so I, I could mark this link as verifies and if I have, let's say, several links between software architecture and detail design with several roles, I, I have to choose the link type here. So uh, if I duplicate links with different names and I create a link from two, then I have to choose which name is relevant. Okay. Uh, next question. Okay, nothing more. Okay, so uh, four minutes left. Um, so I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for your attention. Um, uh, yeah, right before Christmas. Um, I hope I explained some some of the points or the point that I have. Uh, so uh, traceability is not a matter in itself, but uh, you can you can get more information than just a coverage report out of it. So that, that is the message and you need flexible tooling. We provide flexible tooling. We can help you on your projects. Uh, we know how to deal with huge amount of data. We are fast. Um, we know how to build tools and to adjust them to, to your needs. Uh, yeah, that, that was the message of the day. Uh, so again, thank you all for your attention. Um, have a nice Christmas and happy new year. Thank you. Bye.
Bye.